Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily News. I'm Nicholas Richardson. Family, friends and military colleagues have said goodbye to Sergeant Mateusz Szytek. The funeral took place in his hometown of Novi Lubiel near Vyshkov. The soldier from the 1st Warsaw Armoured Brigade died after being fatally stabbed by a migrant on the Polish-Belarusian border. He was given a military funeral. Crowd said goodbye to Sergeant Mateusz Szytek. Moving words were spoken by Mateusz's mother of blessed memory. Let Mateusz, as a soldier of the Polish army, be a symbol of the fight for our safety. Mateusz left a testament to every Pole. Care for an independent and safe homeland. Care for Poland. Wait for us, our son. When God appoints the time, we will be together again. The President of the Republic of Poland, Andrzej Duda, was present at the funeral ceremony. A Polish soldier, a defender of the homeland, rests here. People from all over Poland came here to honour him. A Polish soldier by vocation and upbringing rests here. When he chose his service, he knew that it was associated with risk. He took up the task and did not desert. He died in the service of the Republic of Poland. He gave his life for us, for our homeland. There is nothing more valuable to the homeland than its defenders who are ready to pay for its freedom, sovereignty and independence with their lives. Thank you, on behalf of the entire nation. Today, at 12 noon, sirens sounded across Poland in honour of the murdered soldier. MPs also paid tribute to the fallen soldier. Mateusz Sitek died defending Poland's borders, the first Polish soldier to do so since World War II. He died from wounds inflicted by an illegal migrant. Law and justice politicians demanded a special commemoration for the memory of the Polish soldier. The day of his funeral should become a day of mourning. But that didn't happen. That's why Poles organize themselves. They pray and lay flowers and candles at the military hospital in Warsaw, where Mateusz died. My deepest condolences for the family of this young man. We should join them in prayer and hope that there will be no such occurrences in the future. For me, he is a hero and he deserves a national mourning day. An exceptional young man. He went to fight for Poland and all of us. He was murdered and the authorities say they can't find this criminal? They know very well who did it. Mateusz Sitek's death is the result of hostile actions by Russia and Belarus. Moscow is waging an undeclared hybrid war against Poland by bringing illegal migrants to the eastern border, who are behaving increasingly aggressively. So the responsibility for this crime falls on the Russian side. The Polish authorities keep quiet. The mainstream media keep quiet, while more and more illegal immigrants, returned by the German authorities, arrive in Poland. These people have been caught in the Federal Republic of Germany and the authorities of that country, instead of offering them hospitality, are throwing them back over the border to Poland. Organisations dealing with these people are raising the alarm. Kamil Niradka reports. This is just one, you could say one of a thousand, stories that took place on the Polish-German border. I found a document from the interrogation of a person identified in German as Jamal. The federal police in Frankfurt expelled him to Poland and prohibited from returning. Jamal refused to sign this document and was expelled to Poland. A story as scary as thousands of others. Germany has sealed its borders very tightly. Therefore, the open German border is a thing of the past. According to information from German services, from the beginning of the year until the end of April, Germany sent back 3,500 illegal migrants to Poland. Hence the appeal. There's a problem. We inform the authorities about it, but there is no response. What is already the norm on the Polish-German border does not arouse as much interest as in the case of the eastern border with Belarus. The lies spread by the pseudo-elites have had no effect. Public opinion polls clearly show that in matters where the Polish raison d'état is important, the sense of security plays a key role. Polish soldiers and officers always act in accordance with the law and with an open heart. And here the question must be asked, will there be appropriate reflection? One day Donald Tusk declares a border is safe and another he speaks about horrors that are happening there. This is the only factor that celebrities take into account in these matters. Then there is nothing else to do but stick your head in the sand. Please leave me alone. 
President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, has been convicted of all three felony charges at his federal trial in Delaware, all of them related to the purchase of a revolver in 2018, when the president's son lied on a mandatory gun purchase form by saying he was not illegally using or addicted to drugs. He faces up to 25 years in prison. The president, Joe Biden, has already said he will not pardon his son, but issued a statement saying he and First Lady Jill Biden love and support their son and are proud of his resilience in recovery. Prosecutors work to prove that Hunter Biden lied on a federal firearm form known as ATF Form 4473 in October 2018 when he ticked a box labeled no when asked whether he was an unlawful user of a firearm or addicted to controlled substances. Hunter Biden purchased the gun from a store called StarQuest Shooters and Survival Supply in Wilmington. The jury convicted Hunter Biden, the president's son, of all three charges of indictment after a week-long trial here in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, he was charged with two counts of making false statements, convicted of both counts, and a third count of uh, illegal possession of a gun because he was an addict. The jury concluded at the time he purchased the gun and therefore wasn't eligible to be purchasing this gun at a gun store here. Hunter Biden has a well-documented history of drug abuse, which was most notably documented in his 2021 memoir, Beautiful Things, which walks readers through his previous need to smoke crack cocaine every 20 minutes, how his addiction was so prolific that he referred to himself as a crack daddy to drug dealers, and anecdotes revolving around drug deals, such as the Washington DC crack dealer Biden named as Bicycles. His defense team did not dispute Hunter Biden's long history with substance abuse, which also includes an addiction to alcohol. The defense instead argued that on the day Hunter Biden bought the Cobra Colt 38, he did not consider himself an active drug addict, and they cited the first son's stint in rehab ahead of the October 2018 purchase. This is not the end of the story for Hunter Biden either. He's got charges pending in Los Angeles uh, for, un uh, for a tax case, and that case is set for trial in September. So he still has uh, more on his plate to deal with heading into the election. Per aspera ad astra, as the Latin motto goes. The tops of high-rise buildings are certainly closer to the stars, and perhaps this is why the Polish climber Marcin Banot cannot resist the urge to climb them. However, some bureaucrats do not get his message. Mr Banot's climb in Buenos Aires was abruptly stopped. Instead of reaching the stars, he merely reached world news. Polish climber Marcin Banot was arrested as he tried to scale a 30-storey building in Buenos Aires without a safety harness, wearing his iconic number 10 Argentina football jersey. The 36-year-old daredevil managed to scale 25 floors of the 410-foot Globant building, as surprised onlookers gathered to watch him perform the stunt live. More than 30 firefighters, ambulances and rescuers were deployed under the building after someone inside called the police. He wore the Argentinian football team's number 10 jersey, a number considered iconic, because of its association with soccer legends such as Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi. Video footage zoomed in to show him trying to climb up as firefighters rushed to rescue him and onlookers watched in anticipation. Known by his nickname BNT on social media, the urban climber has pulled similar stunts in other countries as well and has 2.7 million followers on YouTube. However, his ambition was cut short after he was plucked from the building in a safety harness by firefighters and brought back to the ground. Mr. Banlot did not uh, resist arrest and he was taken into custody. He could be ordered to pay the cost of the rescue operations, officials said. It was his second attempt to climb the same building after he was taken down during his first attempt earlier. Arrests and legal troubles are not new for rooftoppers. It is not known whether he was scaling for a cause or a campaign as urban climbers usually do. Early this year, a free climber known as the French Spiderman scaled a skyscraper in Manila to bring attention to the South China Sea dispute amid incidents of standoffs between the Philippines and China. Alain Robert, 61, briefly brought traffic to a standstill and drew a crowd of shocked onlookers in the Philippines' capital financial district as he scaled a 47-storey building without a safety harness. He was swiftly arrested by police as they waited for him to climb down. Last year, a British man was taken into custody after he attempted to scale the world's fifth tallest building without a safety harness. The man, identified by the Chosun Ilbo newspaper as George King Thompson, managed to climb halfway up the building to the 73rd floor before South Korean authorities forced him to abandon his attempt to reach the top of the 123-storey Lotte World Tower in Seoul. That's the news, but stay with us for the weather forecast. Alexander Vejeski's interview with Romanian Member of Parliament Christian Teres and Mihal Rachon's show Rock Rachon. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.